So like I said in the previous video, what we want to make sure that we know is a couple of words and vocabulary and some ideas before we talk about the more um, complicated translation part. So um, this picture that I have here is really good to kind of show you this whole process and how it works. So let's say that we have our DNA template, right, which is going to be in the nucleus. And through transcription, we're going to make that messenger RNA strand. Now, if you look, the messenger RNA was made in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And if you look at this top strand, this top strand is the complement to this strand here, right? The only difference is that everywhere there's a T in the RNA, there, uh, in the DNA, there's actually a U in the RNA, right? So um, that's going to be because this is RNA. And that was something we learned like a long time ago about the differences between DNA and RNA. So um, another thing I want you to notice is that we can divide this RNA into little groups of three. So UGG is one group of three, UUU is another group of three, GGC is another group of three, and so on. So those groups of three are what are called codons. And that's going to be important in translation because there's going to be tRNAs and they're going to have the complement to that that's called the anticodon. Okay, so that's going to be really, really, really important to understand as far as the whole process goes. Okay, let's go and look at your notes. I think there was something else I wanted to show you with the notes. Um, the reading frame is just talking about how we read everything three nucleotides at a time, right? How it was like UUU, AUU, or whatever. Um, what's kind of crazy is the genetic code is going to, so those three nucleotides are going to code for amino acids, which we'll talk about in a second. And this is a huge chart of all of the amino acids and the possible codes on the RNA that can code for them. What's really crazy is that this code is pretty much universal, whether you're talking about bacteria, protists, amoebas, plants, animals, us, we all have the same code. And this is pretty strong evidence for evolution, if you ask me. Um, and that's one of the big arguments for evolution is it's kind of weird that we'd, and coincidental that we would all have the exact same genetic code. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to go back to that chart in a little bit because there's some other important stuff that I want to show you about that. But now let's talk about um, translation. So we've already talked about transcription. Um, if we scroll down here, oh, there is one thing I wanted to talk about with transcription that's important to know. Um, so in prokaryotes, transcription is going to be a little simpler than in eukaryotes. And with all this stuff, it's going to be like that. Prokaryotes are just simpler. They don't even have a nucleus, right? And so eukaryotes are going to be a little bit more complex. Now, one thing that's important to know about these, oh, I think I have it further down here, sorry, is that in eukaryotic cells, there are going to be what are called post-transcriptional modifications. And that's going to be this slide that's right here. So what I mean by that is, if you think about it, we are inside the nucleus, we've got our DNA, we're going to make that little strand of RNA. Now that RNA has to travel from inside the nucleus all the way out to the cytoplasm and it has to find the ribosome. In that time, a lot of things can try to react with it and we don't want that to happen. So one thing that we can do for that is the five prime cap and the three prime poly A tail. So the numbers obviously have to do with what end of the RNA these are gonna be found on. But the way I think of these is like, you know on your shoelace where you have the little plastic thing at the end that keeps your shoelace from unraveling? That's what these are. So they're just kind of like little caps at the end and those are going to keep the RNA from unraveling, reacting with things when it shouldn't and that type of stuff. Now, another thing that's going to happen post-transcription is there are going to be these things that come along called SNRPs. And let's see if I, I know I've got a picture of these guys. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, they're at the end, but okay. In your DNA, you're going to have coding regions and you're going to have non-coding regions. So um, they're called exons and introns. And ironically, the ones that are coding for stuff are called exons and the ones that are kind of junk are called introns. And so when that messenger RNA is created and the little tails are put on there, the little caps, what's going to happen is there's really no point in keeping the introns because they don't code for anything. So what's going to happen is there are going to be these things called SNRPs, which stands for small ribonuclear proteins. And their job is to find the ends of the introns and to cut them out, 
slice them out, and then you're going to have that messenger RNA that is just a bunch of exons with no introns in between, because there's really no point in having them because they don't code for anything. So <clears throat> the little caps at the end, and then cutting out all the introns are going to be things that happen post-transcriptionally in eukaryotic cells. It doesn't happen in prokaryotes because they don't have a nucleus, so there's really not a far place for their RNA to travel. The whole thing just kind of happens right in the same area. <clears throat> okay. So now let's get into the fun. Let's talk about translation. Okay, um, so what I think is the best way to think about this is like it's a machine that's assembling something. And so um, if we go to my PowerPoint, we will go back and kind of take this piece by piece and talk about what's happening. <clears throat> All right. So. What's going to happen is you've got your messenger RNA. Where did my mouse go? There we go. You've got your messenger RNA that's been transcribed, and it's going to find the ribosome. And what's going to happen is when it finds the ribosome, there's going to be a little sequence on there called the start codon. Okay? And so if you have a codon, there is going to be a tRNA that has the anticodon, which is the complement. So you can see here AUG is a start codon, and you can see UAC is the complement, and that's attached to the tRNA. Now what the tRNA is doing is this specific tRNA is going to be going out into the cytoplasm to find methionine, which is this right here. And so um, there are a whole bunch of these, and they're all hooking up with methionines. Now, if you had another tRNA that had like GAU or something, that one is going to be out in the cytoplasm looking for whatever amino acid it codes for. Okay, so they each have their amino acids that they're going to code for. So this one had methionine attached to it. So what's going to happen is it's going to click into place, and then the large subunit is going to come on here. And now, if you look, we have an empty spot open right here. Okay, we'll come back to that and that. Okay, so we um, pretend these other shapes aren't here right now. Okay, so we've got our little tRNA. It's clicked into this site. Over here is another empty spot. <clears throat> so whatever tRNA, there's a whole bunch of them floating around, whichever one has the complement or the anticodon for this open site is going to click into place. And if you notice, it has an amino acid attached to it as well. So it clicks into place. The next thing that's going to happen is the ribosome is going to catalyze a reaction, and that reaction is going to cause this amino acid, and this one has a chain because we're coming in in the middle of the process, but don't worry about that, this amino acid to come over onto this one. So now you can see that this chain that was attached to this first one has now all gone over and attached to this one. So now we have an empty tRNA. So there's no point in keeping that one around, right? So what's going to happen is the empty one is going to, everything's going to click over one. And so you can see the empty one is going to be ejected. And now the one that has the polypeptide has moved over, okay? And then if we go back up here, we're in the same position again. And now another empty slot is open. So this next one can click in. The whole similar thing is going to happen again. And then when we get back up to here, another empty spot. So it's basically this ribosome is just moving three nucleotides at a time down the messenger RNA. And so what's going to happen is every time one clicks into place on there, you're going to be making this long chain one amino acid longer. Well, let's think about it. If we have a long chain of amino acids, what is that called? That's called a polypeptide, right? And if we fold a polypeptide into its shape, it makes a protein. So this is how we actually form proteins from that code in your DNA. So that's the basics of translation. It's not super bad, but some people get a little bit disturbed by it. <laughs> okay, so that's the process of it. Now we're going to talk about a couple of more details. Let's see how we're doing in our, in our time. Actually, we'll go into that the next one.